Did you know it can take up to seven exposures to a brand for an average customer to purchase a product online? This makes Facebook retargeting ads the lifeblood of any ad campaign that is looking to drive actual leads and sales from their audience. Because the fact of the matter is your audience won't buy from you the first time that they are exposed to your brand. So in this second installment on our series on Facebook ads, we're gonna be taking you through the exact steps that you can follow to set up Facebook retargeting ads for your brand, the different options that you have for running retargeting ad campaigns on Facebook, the formula for winning Facebook ads when it comes to retargeting, and five retargeting ad best practices so you can get the best bang for your buck on your Facebook ad retargeting campaigns. Before we begin, if you are new to the channel, we are giving away an unlimited subscription to InVideo worth over $350 to our favorite comment out of the first 50 comments on the video. So make sure to stick around to the end and comment down below what your best takeaway was from the video. In the previous video in the series, we did go over setting up a prospecting ad for your first Facebook ads campaign. So now you should have some actual data to play with because I also showed you how to go and set up the Facebook pixel so that you can go and track data on your website. Now, alternatively, if you didn't follow through that tutorial and you have already ran a Facebook ads campaign and you're just ready to start retargeting, we are gonna go and have a look at how to do that now. So firstly, go and have a look at your first campaign that you ran and more than likely you haven't really generated any leads or any sales, maybe a very low amount. So you wanna just go and have a look at some of the data first. So if you are getting a good amount of link clicks or if you are getting people adding to the cart or going to the checkout or just viewing your video for around over 15 to 30 seconds, then you can go and do loads of different retargeting based on this data now. So over here in this ads campaign, we can go and see that we have the link clicks over here. We can also go and see that we have the average percentage viewed of the video which is just over 30%, which is not too bad. So like I said, you can go and use all of this type of data to now go and start running retargeting ads. So let's go and have a look at how you can actually start running these retargeting ads. So what you are going to need to do is you're gonna to go to business tools over here within your Facebook business manager, and you are gonna to go to audiences. And from here, we can go and have a look at the different retargeting options that we have. So once the audience dashboard loads, from here, you can go and create a custom custom audience that is based off of the data that was collected on your pixel run from another campaign. And like I said, you can use the data from multiple different sources, such as how many link clicks you got, different pages that the audience went to, such as the add to cart or the checkout page or other things like video views. So what you can go and do is you can go to create audience over here, and then you can go and click on custom audience. Now from here, you'll see that you have many different options when it comes to creating a custom audience audience for your retargeting ads. So we'll just go into a few of the main ones that you're probably going to want to use. So firstly, you have your different sources. So more than likely, it's going to be a website. So if you just go and choose your website over here, then you can go and click next. So if you choose website, you can go and create a custom audience based on the interactions that people have had with your website from your Facebook ad campaigns. So firstly, you're going to want to choose your source. So this is going to be the Facebook pixel that is installed on your website. So just make sure that you've got the correct Facebook pixel. If you've only got one pixel, then it should just show up as the default pixel. Then over here, you will have the events. So you'll see all website visitors. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting when it comes to retargeting. So firstly, you can just go and retarget all of your website visitors. So anybody that's come over to your website, you can just go and retarget them with an ad. So if you was originally running a traffic campaign as your ads campaign, then you can just go and target every single person that came over to your website based off of all of that different traffic. Now, alternatively, if you were running a conversion ad campaign, where you were trying to optimize for a purchase, you can go and retarget people that either added to the cart or went all the way to the checkout and then just didn't complete the purchase. So if we go to events over here, what you can go and do is you can go and see that you've got the initiate checkout event and you've also got the add to cart event. So you could go and choose one of these and go and create a custom audience based on that. So for example, if we just go and choose add to cart, then over where it says retention, that basically means anyone that done this in the last 
last however many days that you choose in here. So you're probably going to want to choose 30 days at a maximum. It really depends how much data you've collected and how long you've been running your ad campaigns. So maybe you've been running your ad campaigns for a few months. So you could come in here and do 90 days. So anybody that added to the cart in the last 90 days, and that could be for something where you're releasing a new product. So somebody that has purchased from you before, then you can go and retarget them with new products and they're more likely to purchase from you again. But if you've just started with a completely fresh ad account and you've only been running traffic ad campaigns just to build up some data, then more likely you're just going to want to do the last 30 days because nobody's actually purchased from you and you haven't been running ads long enough to even be able to build up enough data to go any longer than 30 days. So like I said, you can go and choose specific events when it comes to your website. So you can go and choose add to cart. You could go and choose initiate checkout. So this is even one step th further than the people that added to the cart. So the people that initiated the checkout, they're so close to the purchase. So when you go and retarget them, that's a really easy thing to do to go and just push them over the final edge to go back and complete the checkout and the purchase. Some other website events that we have here are page view. So if you just go and choose page view, that's basically anyone that viewed your page, but you can go for a specific page view as well. So you can go over here where it says people who visited specific web pages so maybe you want to go and retarget people who came over to your booking page for example if you are looking to generate leads and you wanted people to go and book a call with you you can then just go and put the url in here over for your booking page and then anybody who went over to your booking page you can go and retarget them as well so there are a few different options that you can do maybe it's a specific product page so anybody that went over to a specific product page on your e-commerce website you can go and put the url in here and you can go and create an audience on that now what you can do as well when you are setting up custom audiences for your retargeting ads you can go and exclude people so for example let's say you wanted to only go and target people that added to cart but didn't initiate checkout then you can go and do that so for example over here where we've got events i could go and say i want to go and create an audience for people that added to the cart in the last 30 days but i want to exclude anybody that made a purchase for example so we exclude people that made a purchase anybody else that added to the cart because the reason we'd want to exclude people that made a purchase because they've already made a purchase so maybe we don't need to retarget them again with a specific ad for a specific product because maybe they've already purchased that product so you can go and do that alternatively you can go and include people so you could go and say anybody that's added to cart and i want to go include anybody that has initiated checkout as well. So anybody that's added to the cart in the last 30 days or anybody that's initiated the checkout in the last 30 days, that's gonna be all part of one audience. So you can go and add those two together. Like I said, once again, you can go and choose the retention days. So maybe you just wanna go and test it out for a week. Anybody that added to the cart in the last week, it's still gonna be fresh in their mind. Now, like I said, I think 30 days is okay because it's still fairly fresh in their mind. They still sort of will remember that brand exposure and going over to your site and adding to the cart. But you can always go and test it out and create different custom audiences based on different retention days. So if you do use some of your website data to create this custom audience for your retargeting ads, then all you need to do is just go and name your audience and optionally you can go and give it a description. So I recommend just keep it simple. So you can just go and put in the name of your website and then just go and put in what the actual retargeting is. So if we've got add to cart, we can just go and put add to cart in here. Or if we're doing add to cart and we've included initiate checkout, we can go and say add to cart plus initiate checkout or if you're just doing initiate checkout you can just go and put the name of your website and initiate checkout so that just keeps it really simple when you are going and creating these custom audiences for retargeting ads you know exactly what data you are using for these custom audiences now you can also go and add your description so i've just put in here anyone who added to cart or initiated checkout in the last 30 days it's pretty self-explanatory but you can go and put a description in there if you want to go and create different custom audiences that are very similar so for example if we put the retention to seven days and we had one for 30 days we could put in the description anyone who added to cart or initiated checkout in the last 30 days and then we have another custom audience where the description says anyone who added to cart or initiated checkout in the last seven days so then all you need to do is just go and click on create audience so like i said those are your options when it comes to creating a custom audience for your retargeting ads based off of data that's being collected 
on your website. But I do just want to go and show you a few other options that you have when it comes to retargeting. So I'm just going to go and click on the X over here. So now once again, we can go and click on create audience. We can go and click on custom audience. And now from here, you will see that you have your Facebook sources. So your Facebook sources are pretty self-explanatory. It's basically any data that has been collected through interactions on Facebook. So for example, we could go for video over here. So if we go and choose video as a Facebook source and click next. Now we can go and create a custom audience and retarget those people based off of people that have viewed our content from our Facebook account. So if we go to choose a content type, and you will see a few different metrics that you can use to go and set up this custom audience for your retargeting ads. So you'll see a loads of different ones over here. We've got people that viewed at least three seconds. We've got 10 seconds. We've got 15 seconds. And then over here, you've got 25, 50, 75, 95%. So you can actually just go and create a custom audience based off of all of these. Now, generally, of course, the people who viewed a longer amount of your video are more likely to go and complete the purchase just because it shows that they've got more interest in the product or service that you're offering because they viewed more of the video. So once you have gone and chosen that metric, you can go to choose videos. So then you can go and choose a video that you have been running. So if we go and choose this video, for example, and we just hit confirm. So now anybody that's viewed at least 75% of this video, we can go and retarget them with a retargeting ads campaign. So now over here, once again, you have the retention. So you can go and change this to however many days. Or like I said, maybe 30 days is around the appropriate amount of time for them to not completely forget who your brand was when they viewed it the first time. So once again, then you can just go and name your audience. So once again, you can just go and keep it simple when naming your audiences. So I've just put in here the name of your brand, 75% video views, or if it's 95%, you can say 95% or whatever it is. And then in the description, we've just put anyone who viewed 75% video ad creative one. So let me just make sure I spelled that correctly. And the reason I put video ad creative one is because you might have multiple different ad creatives that you ran in your first campaign. So you want to make sure that you are saying exactly which ad creative that they viewed 75% of. So maybe you've got four different video ad creatives, one, two, three, and four. So this is the custom audience for people that viewed 75% of the first ad creative. Then once again, you can just go and click on create audience. So like I said, that is another option that I think is really good when it comes to retargeting because it just shows the customer's intent. If they watched over 75% of one of your video ads, more than likely they have at least a little bit of interest in your product. So they probably are worth retargeting. So once again, we can go to create audience and we can go and have a look at a few other options that you've got for creating custom audiences for retargeting. So you could go for Facebook page over here. So if we go and choose Facebook page and then we go and click on next over here. And then basically what you can go and do is you can go and choose anyone that engaged with your page, anyone that liked your page, anyone that visited your page. So there's loads of different options over here. So I think this is a really good option once again, because anybody that has engaged with your Facebook page has been exposed to your brand and they've gone out of their way to go and like your page or maybe comment on your page. So that means that once again, maybe they're showing a little bit of interest in your product or service. So once again, this is a really great way to go and create a custom audience for retargeting, especially if you have a lot of page likes, if you've managed to build up a lot of page likes and page engagement in your first ad campaign, maybe you've got a thousand likes, then you can go and retarget all of those people with a retargeting ads campaign. Once again, you can go and change the retention to around 30 days, and then you can go and name your audience appropriately like I've shown you in the rest of the video. So just to go over briefly a few of the other custom audience types that you can go and use, you've got Instagram account, you've got events, you've got shopping, you've got Facebook listings, you have lead forms. So there are loads of other types of Facebook sources that you can use. And also you do have a customer list over here. So if you go and choose a customer list, you can actually go and upload a list of customers that you can go and retarget to. So maybe if you have built up an email list from your actual website, you can go and add that in here and then you can go and retarget all of those people based off of your email list as well. So like I said, maybe you have an email opt-in on your website Website, and you've got a couple thousand people who've opted in for your newsletter on your website, you can go and upload them as an email list and then you can go and retarget them on Facebook as well. So that's another really great option to go and retarget people that maybe you haven't targeted on Facebook before, but they have had exposure to your brand because they've been over to your website and they've opted in for your newsletter. And then you can go and retarget them using Facebook ads. So once you have gone and created your custom audience, based off of any of this data that I've just shown you, you are now ready to go and run some retargeting ads. 
Now I recommend to have a few different custom audiences so you can run a few different retargeting ads and see which ones perform the best. Don't just go and create one custom audience based off of add to cart and then just run it. Go and create a few different ones. Go and create an initiate checkout. Go and create a 75% video views. Maybe you've got a customer list. Go and do that as well. So you have a few different custom audiences that you can use for your retargeting ads. So once you have done that, you can once again, just go from your business manager, click on business tools, and then go and click on ads manager. So once the ads manager loads, you're ready to start setting up your retargeting ads campaign. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and click on create. Now, when it comes for choosing a campaign objective for retargeting, you're of course going to want to go for conversions or perhaps lead generation, depending on what type of product or service that you are offering. But more than likely conversions is going to be your best bet because you actually want to go and get people to finally make that purchase. So we're gonna go and choose conversions over here. And then over here, we can click on continue. So once you do that, then you're gonna go and name your campaign so your campaign can just be named after your original campaign and then you can just go and put retargeting at the end so in the original video we did just go and name our first campaign the name of your business traffic campaign so you can go and name your retargeting campaign just something like the name of your business warm traffic retargeting so that basically means warm traffic are people that have seen your first ads campaign they've come over to your website so that you've just warmed them up they're aware of your brand they're aware of your product and now you're going to go and retarget them so you can just go and choose that once again you have the special ad categories so more than likely they're not going to apply to you so it's just for credit employment housing and social issues so you can just ignore that if it's not appropriate for your business then you have the buying type once again just leave it default as auction because all facebook ad campaigns are auction and then over here you can go and change your campaign objective once again if you want to but like i said more than likely you're going to want to just leave it as conversions you can go and do a b testing now like i said you don't really need to do this here you can go and test out different creatives and different custom audiences for your retargeting ads campaign when you actually start setting up the ad sets and the ads themselves so i would just leave this for now and then you have campaign budget optimization once again i recommend turning this on so as i explained in the previous video campaign budget optimization just means that facebook will try to optimize your ads to get the best out of your budget and why would any Anybody not to want to do this well obviously some massive companies have the best marketers in the world so they like to optimize things themselves but if you're just a small business and you're running your ads on your own then it's probably best to just leave campaign budget optimization on because like I said Facebook will optimize the ads to squeeze the most out of them that they can for you so then you can go and choose your campaign budget I personally prefer to use a daily budget because then I, then I know how much I'm going to spend each day whereas if you choose a lifetime budget let's say your lifetime budget was $700 and you want to go and run it for 10 days it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to spend $70 each day it might spend $200 one day then $300 the next day and then suddenly you've just burned through your budget really quickly so I prefer to go for a daily budget so like I said if you've got $700 then you could go and put in 70 in here and you could run it for 10 days or you could go for 100 and you could run it for a week so like I said I recommend going for a daily budget probably running ads for around a week is a good idea. So what you can go and do is you can go and get your whole budget allocation and just divide that by seven and then that's your daily budget amount. Now, once you have done all of that, you can just go and click on next and now you will be in your ad set. So firstly, you've got your ad set name. So you can just go and name your ad set after the custom audience that you're going to use for your retargeting ad. So you can see over here, I've just put add to cart 30 day custom audience. So anybody that added to the cart in the last 30 days, that's the custom audience I'm going to use for this ad set. So just go and name your ad set appropriately, appropriately, and then you can go and choose your budget and schedule. So you can just go and decide when you want your ad to actually start. Then if we go and scroll down, we will see create a new audience. Now from here underneath, you will see custom audiences. So it's gonna say search existing audiences. So you can go and click in here and then you can go and choose a custom audience that you just went and set up. So we can see over here, we have add to cart and initiate checkout. Now don't worry, it's gonna say that the size of the audience may decrease because of the iOS 14 updates. So don't worry, you can just go and ignore that. So once you have gone and done that, we can just go and scroll down. Now all of this here won't be included, so don't worry about that. So over here, it's just going to go and simply use your custom audience. So don't worry about any of these other targeting options. So now we're just gonna go and scroll down and you can go and click on next. So now we are actually in the ad itself. And this is where you're going to set up your ad creative and your copy. If you are receiving value from the video so far, make sure to subscribe 
for more video creation and marketing content and make sure to give the video a massive thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below the best takeaway from this video because we're picking one lucky winner from the first 50 comments and they're going to receive an unlimited subscription to InVideo worth over $350. Now before we go and create the ad creative for a retargeting ad, I just want to go over a few examples of retargeting ads that you could go and potentially use. So firstly, you want to go and outline any sales objections that a potential customer might have. So any reason why maybe they didn't purchase your product. So let's say it's a service, for example, you could go and say, we will have X service set up within five days. So you're just going and reminding them that we can go and set this thing up for you really quickly. So that might have been a reason maybe why they didn't originally make the purchase because they thought it might be time consuming or something like that. So within the retargeting ad, you're just letting them know that you can go and provide your service really quickly. Or if it's a physical product, think about the typical objections or reasons why somebody might not make the purchase. So for example, if it was a clothing item, you could say something like free returns on all of our items within your retargeting ad. So that way you know that the person who originally didn't make the purchase, maybe they're a little bit apprehensive of making the purchase because they thought it wouldn't fit. But if you're saying free returns within your retargeting ad, you're just letting them know and just giving them that final push to make the purchase. Another great idea for your retargeting ad is to go and add scarcity and fear of missing out to your products. So you could go and set up a deal or you could go and say while well, stocks last or limited amount available. Things like this just add scarcity to the product and then potential customers that came over to your website and didn't finally make the purchase. Now they've got that little bit more urgency to go and make the purchase because of the fear of missing out. Finally, you could go and offer them a coupon just to make the final push. So maybe they went all the way to the checkout and they didn't make the purchase. And the reason might be they just didn't think that the product was worth that amount of money. So they were about to buy it and they thought, maybe I don't have this much money to actually purchase this product. So you can go and offer them a 10 or 15% discount in your retargeting ad and then they maybe think twice about purchasing the product and actually go and complete the checkout that they originally went to. You can also go and show potential customers complimentary products. So maybe they didn't complete the purchase on one of your products but you could go and show them another product that maybe is similar and maybe has more interest and sells better and maybe they'll be more interested in making the purchase on that particular product. So now we've had a look at some ideas that you can incorporate into your retargeting ad. Let's go and have a look at how to actually go and create these retargeting ads. So in order to do this, we will be using InVideo, of course. So I will leave a link in the description to InVideo. And the really great thing about InVideo is it has over 4,000 templates in various different niches. So whatever niche you're in or product or service that you're trying to sell, you'll be able to find a template that you can go and use and you can edit them within minutes to go and create your retargeting ads. When InVideo run their retargeting campaigns on Facebook, they actually use InVideo to create all of their ad creatives. So that just shows you how powerful the tool actually is. So if you just go and click the link in the description, you will come over to this page. You can just go and click on sign up and go and create your free InVideo account. Once you go and enter in your details, just go and click on continue. Now from here, you can go and use the search bar to find a template that is related to your niche or product or service that you're trying to sell. Of course, you're going to want to choose a square ad because they work best on Facebook. And then from here, you can just go over here. And like I said, just use the search bar to search for a niche that's related to your product or service. So if I just go and type in tailor in here and I go and hit enter, and now we can go and see there's all of the templates that are related to suit tailors. So go and choose an appropriate template. If you just go and click on it, you can go and view the templates. Now, ideally you want to go and use a different template than you used from your original traffic ad because you want your ad to be a little bit different to your original ad because it is a retargeting ad. You don't want to just go and show your audience the exact same ad because that's just gonna bore them and they may just suffer from ad blindness because if they've already seen it once and they didn't go and complete the purchase, they'll probably just ignore it the second time. So go and use a different template or you can go and use the same template, but we're going to go and change the captions and the footage of that template. So once you have gone and chosen a template, just click on use this template. Now from here, you can go and edit the template. So you can go and change the footage. And don't forget that InVideo has thousands of stock footage that you can go and use. So if you just go over to video over here, you can go and search through the stock footage library and you can just go and drag that on here. So for example, if I just go and put suit in here and then you can go and find footage related to your niche, you can just go and drag it onto the template. Just go and hit replace. And then what you need to do is make sure that your scenes aren't 
any longer than five seconds long. So you want your scenes and your footage to change every five seconds because that just constantly captures the audience's attention. If they're any longer than five seconds, they'll probably get bored and just end up scrolling off of your ad. So what you can do is you can come to the time down here. You can go and drag it where you want it to start. So I want it to sort of start over here. So I can go and drag that down to around here. So we can go and just say, let's just say that's five seconds. So we can go and just change the timeline to five seconds over here. And then, like I said, because I don't want it to be any longer than five seconds long, I'm just going to go and edit it out to 10 seconds. So we can just go and enter that in there and then just go and click on done. So for this type of retargeting ad, the first original ad, we were just telling them that it looks great and feels great to have a tailor-made suit. Now for this type of product, once again, for retargeting, we could go and offer them a 15% discount. So you need to think about the type of product or service that you are selling. And that way you can determine what type of ad you want to go and create for retargeting. But like I said, if you are going and offering a coupon or if you are going and adding some scarcity to your product, that's always a good way to go and start. So even if it was a service-based product, you could go and say the next 10 people that sign up for our service are going to get a 20% discount. So for this example over here, I've just gone and said 15% off all suits this week only. So once again, we're adding that scarcity to the product because we're saying if you don't get it this week, then you won't go and receive your 15% off. Now, if they went all the way to the checkout or even if they added to cart, once they see that, they're going to think, oh, well, I better just go and purchase it because I didn't purchase it before, but now I'm going to get 15% off and it's going to end this week. So then you can just go and reinforce that throughout the rest of your ad. So over here, I've just gone and set a perfectly crafted made to measure suit. Don't miss out. Once again, reinforcing that fear of missing out. And then you can finally just go and add your call to action. So over here, we've got book free consultation. So I could go and add in here, use code FB15 at checkout. Now you can just go, of course, go and delete things. So where it says call over here, I could just go and get rid of this. And then we just go and have the website. And then you can just go and add in your logo. Once again, just to go and reinforce your brand. So I can just go and select this logo here and we can just go and make it a little bit bigger. So that is gonna be your call to action where you're telling them go and use the code now at the website when you go and check out. Now, like I said, you just wanna go and make sure that each of your scenes is no longer than five seconds. So you can just go and use this little pencil icon to go and change the scenes to five seconds. And then as I mentioned, you can always go and change the footage. So once you have gone and created your retargeting ad, whether you're using fear of missing out or a coupon, or if you're going and talking about any objections that they might have to the sale, then all you need to just do is go and hit download and share and then you're just going to go and export the video once your video has finished rendering and you have downloaded it we can head back over to our Facebook ads manager now and complete the ad so where it says new ad you can go and change your ad name so just go and name it after your creative so we could go and just say video retargeting ad one so you're going to want to have a few different creatives so you can go and test out different things so we're just going to go and call this video ad creative one but let's say you had four different videos you can go with, say video retargeting ad two video retargeting ad three and so on when you are naming your ads then you just of course go and select your facebook page you can go and select an instagram account as well if you want to go and run these ads on instagram and then as you scroll down over here you can go and create your ad so we're going to go for a single image or video so when you just go and scroll down once again over here here, it's going to go and say add media so just go and click on add media then just go and click on add video and then from here you can just go and click upload and upload your video that you downloaded from in video so we're just going to go and choose the video over here and then you can just go and click on next and now from here you can go and choose your aspect ratio so it's going to go and say vary aspect ratio because it's going to go and show it on different areas within facebook so we can just go and leave it like that and then we're just going to go and hit done now when it comes to writing the primary text you want to start off with a striking headline so i've just gone and put in here the clock is ticking and then we've got the clock emoji now if you want to copy emojis you can use a site called emojipedia and this basically allows you to go and copy emojis and then you can go and use them in your facebook ads and then once again i've just gone and reinforced the text that's also within the videos so we've got 50 percent off all suits this week only use code fb15 at checkout and then if we go and play the video over here we can go and see it says 15 percent off all suits this week only and then we can go and see a perfectly crafted made to measure suit don't miss out and then if we just go and skip to the end we can go and see use code fb 
15 at checkout with the logo over here so you just want to go and do something like that now if we just go and scroll down a little bit we can go and see as well that we've got it in here as well 15% off this week only so that is the headline and then you've obviously got the website and then finally you just want to go and add your call to action to your actual retargeting ad so instead of having learn more for me I'm going to go and choose shop now obviously just use common sense when it comes to choosing an appropriate call to action so if you're looking for more leads it might be contact us or it might be book now if you're a restaurant or whatever it is so we can just go and scroll down and we can just go and choose shop now over here so once you have gone and done that you can just go and hit publish and your retargeting ad will start running now obviously you want to go and test different things so what you can go and do is over here if you click on your ad set you can just go and click on these three dots you can go and hit duplicate then you can duplicate it a few times so you can go and test different custom audiences so the audiences that we created in the beginning you can go and test with different audiences so you can just go and duplicate this so let's just say you want to go and duplicate this three times we can go and hit duplicate over here and once you have gone and duplicated this then you can go and change the ad set name so we could go and say instead of this one being add to cart we could go and say this one is video views 75% and then you can just go and scroll down and just go and choose your different custom audience so you can just go and get rid of this one over here and then over where it says custom audience you can go and choose the custom audience that you created for 75% video views and that way you can go and test out different audiences for the same ad and then what you can do is you can go and do the same thing over here so where we have video retargeting ad one we can just go and click this and then you can go and duplicate the ad itself then we need to do is just go and upload a different video so maybe you want to offer a different coupon or maybe you want to add a different type of scarcity to your video ad or maybe you just want to have some different images on the video ad so you can just go and duplicate it upload it once again write your copy and then all you need to do is just go and hit publish and your retargeting ads campaigns will start running i just want to wrap up with five facebook ad retargeting best practices that you should note to get the best bang for your buck best practice number one is that the conversion campaign objective should be the campaign objective that you go for because ultimately this is what you want the outcome to be when you run retargeting ads you want to go and convert customers and make more sales or more leads best practice number two is to not be too intrusive with your retargeting ads so for example don't go and put in your retargeting ads you left this in the cart make sure you go and purchase it now or something like that because people generally don't like it when companies spy on them so but don't be so obvious when you are using your retargeting ads best practice number three is that you need to switch up the ad creative quite frequently because your audience will have seen your ads quite a few times by now so you don't want to keep showing them the same old ads because they're going to get bored of it and eventually they'll get ad blindness from your brand and they'll just stop looking at your ads altogether best practice number four is that off facebook audiences work the best so basically anybody that's actually interacted with your website generally will work best with retargeting ads as opposed to on facebook audiences such as video views or forms and best practice number five is that generally combining audiences is totally fine and it can actually improve your conversions so what, what do i mean by combining audiences i mean if you combine an add to cart and an initiate checkout audience that's totally fine don't think that you have to run one retargeting campaign with a custom audience that was only add to cart and another retargeting campaign with a custom audience that's only initiate checkout you can go and combine different data sets when you are running your retargeting ad campaigns if you did find value in this video and this facebook ad series Series, then you're going to want to check out our other series where you can dive deeper into your video marketing strategy and you can take people from awareness to consideration straight through to purchase so this is elliot within video make sure to subscribe to the channel for more video creation content give the video a big thumbs up and I'll... đăng ký dùng thử miễn phí phần mềm tạo video tại trang web invideo.mesai